Right, so the international poverty rate in Ghana as of 2021 was forecast at 11.3%, considering the 2011 poverty line set at 1.90 US dollars or a dollar 90 cents. The same rate was forecast for 2022, which represented a slight increase compared to 2019, when the poverty rate was measured at 11.1%. Overall, no significant change in the population's percentage living on up to a dollar and ninety cents per day was expected in the years following 2019. The coronavirus pandemic and its impact on economic activities have contributed to the slow improving poverty levels registered in the country since 2020. UNICEF conducted a research on what citizens consider as causes of poverty in Ghana, and the interest and the answers are interesting. We'll be getting into details of this report, but first. We posted on Facebook asking you what you think is the uh, cause of poverty. So we posted, what do you think is the number one cause of poverty in Ghana? And uh, let me go through some of the comments that we have there. So uh, Soma says, what else do you think causes poverty? When one person steals huge sums of money, which can't be calculated in cities but in dollars. Okay. Uh, Gilia Sempa says, poor sanitation, corruption, and selfish leaders. Uh, Kate Toffman says, our democracy is the main cause of the poverty in, that, in our country. Azari says, government, bad policies and investments. As in bad investments, I'm sure is what you mean. Now, Odeni Huapia also says, greed and selfishness on, of politicians. Dauda Ibrahim says, bad leadership, selfishness and uh, greed on the part of leaders. Majid says favoritism and nepotism coupled with selective justice. Richard says nepotism and corruption. Uh, Kwesi Andrew says bad selfish leadership. Eunice Abaya says selfish and self-centered leaders. Yeboa Benjamin also says the number one cause of poverty in Ghana is our collective greed, which is closely followed by lack of proper planning. There's every reason for a country with a citizenry who find it convenient to steal crash barriers from a newly constructed national road infrastructure to be poor. All right, so those are some of the comments that you've shared. But joining us is Professor Abdul Ghaffaru Abdullahi. They actually conducted the research and uh, he has a lot more information on that. So thank you very much. So what was the motivation for this research? And before all of that though, I, I must say that your research found that for most people, they thought that uh, corruption was the number one cause of poverty. I just want you to highlight that for us. Okay, <clears throat> thanks very much. Can you please hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, so I mean, first and foremost, let me make it very clear that um, the research didn't set out, I mean, with the primary objective of understanding um, uh, or the main objective of understanding the causes of poverty. It right. was the, the overall objective of the research that was commissioned by UNICEF Ghana and conducted by a couple of researchers at the University of Ghana was to understand the knowledge and perceptions of Ghanaians around issues of poverty, vulnerability, social protection, and so on. And this particular question was actually just one of the questions in the survey which try to understand uh, or to, to, to explore the perceptions of Ghanaians in terms of what they thought to be the topmost kind of causes of poverty. And we ask this question in a certain context. I'm sure many of us would recall that when the President before led administration uh, launched the, poverty, uh, the livelihood empowerment Ag against poverty program, the LEAP program in, in March 2008, there were a lot of discussions, a lot of concerns that this is actually not the way that Ghana should be going because programs like this were likely to deepen or cause poverty among the poor, make them lazy. So we, our interest in asking that kind of question was to understand the extent to which that 
I mean, I mean, the extent to which Ghanaians still hold that kind of perception that social protection forms, I mean, uh, uh, of various forms of social protection support, and particularly cash transfer programs like the LEAP, were, 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 were seen to be an important kind of cause of, of poverty. So we, we asked the question in, a, in an open ended manner, but then provided a, a number of um, options asking Ghanaians to rate. The various, I mean, the various factors in terms of what they thought to be the number one uh, and the least kind of causes of 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 of, of poverty and, and 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 corruption actually top the list in terms of in terms of um, um, the, the 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 outcome of the survey results. And we just wanted to see the extent to which Ghanaians blame poverty on the poor themselves. In other words, I mean, if you look at the literature on the causes of poverty, we have kind of endogenous and exogenous factors of poverty. There are those who would simply blame the, the poor for being lazy. They are right. just poor because they are, they are not interested in work and they are lazy. So to what extent are these kind of internal factors uh, um, kind of seem to be the, the primary drivers of poverty in Ghana, as opposed to factors that are outside of the control of, of, of the poor? So we wanted to weigh these kind of two broad uh, um, notable causes of poverty and external factors, most notable issues around corruption, um, top the list as, as, as the foremost cause of, of, of poverty in Ghana. And it's actually obvious from the, so we put up the posts on Facebook and from most of the comments that we're getting, most people agree with you that indeed corruption is uh, the number one cause of poverty. But can you share with us the sample size and regions you focused on in this research? So the project was conducted in six districts. And I mean, the survey targeted nearly around 700 respondents. And we, we, we combined a whole lot of methods. So we, we conducted a survey, but we also conducted a lot of focus group discussions in each of these districts. So the, the regions, we selected the, the six districts from where two in the greater Accra region, um, two in the Upper West region and two in, in the Volta, in the Volta region. Um, and, 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 and in addition to the survey, we conducted key informant interviews uh, with a wide range of actors at, I mean, from the national, regional, all the way to the, to the district level. Um, so these were, this were the, the, the specific areas where we, 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 we collected the data. And the objective was to make sure that we cover the three broad geographical zones of Ghana, um, the southern, middle, and the northern belts of, 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 of Ghana in terms of the coverage of the data collection processes. All right, so we've uh, identified uh, corruption as one of the main causes of uh, of poverty, but there were others. Let's look at the others that the, the people stated. Well, yes, there were other factors, but if you look at the first kind of three, so the first uh, was actually issues of corruption. And, and just to emphasize that in addition to the survey findings that you, you have just reported from your from your followers, I mean, this, this is also in line with, with, with all kinds of uh, global level surveys that have been conducted. I mean, whether you're talking of the Afrobarometer survey data, or you're looking at the World Governance uh, Indicators, um, or the Ibrahim, the Ibrahim Index on African Governance, the Transparency Corruption Perception Index, and so on and so forth. I mean, all of these surveys actually tend to, uh, to paint the same picture, namely that Ghana is actually not winning the fight against uh, corruption. The other key factors that came up uh, related to low political commitment on the part of uh, the political elite to fight in corruption, government's inability to uh, to provide enough um, jobs, uh, job opportunities for 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 for, for, the, for the masses. The fee factor, which actually put the blame on the poor, uh, focused on the issue of having too many children. I mean, there's that perception that many poor people tend to have too many children which sort of uh, uh, tend to deepen their poverty uh, further. Uh, the issue of laziness came up, but it was ranked um, uh, eighth among the 10 factors that, 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 so laziness among the poor is still seen to be uh, one cause of poverty, but of course rated far uh, behind most uh, of the other factors that sort of put the blame on, 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 structural, on structural factors 
on, on, on external factors like issues of corruption, like issues of limited commitment, inadequate investment uh, in towards poverty reduction efforts and so on. Professor Abdullah, did uh, the people, or do you give the people an opportunity to explain why they would say, for instance, that corruption in the public sector or corruption in Ghana is one of the main causes of uh, poverty? Well, yes. Yeah. So as I mentioned, the, 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 the research was conducted using mixed methods research. Uh, uh, so we, we, we conducted interviews and we tried to find out and, and one key response, and which many of us are somehow familiar with, and, and, and again, when I was listening to your, your survey data, the issue people putting the blame on democracy. Right. The issue is not democracy as such, but the form in which democracy has actually taken in Ghana. So one cannot put the blame on democracy as a system of governance per se, but democracy has taken a certain form that tends to deepen uh, corruption in, 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 our, in our specific um, context. I mean, first and foremost, if you, have, if you have a situation where the cost of campaigning is several times higher than what a politician can earn through his, through, I mean, through salaries and so on and so forth, you have a situation where political entrepreneurs are emerging. In other words, <laughs> I like the I, I like the term political entrepreneurs. Yeah, I mean because I have to people have to invest. If there's no state funding of political parties, the politician needs resources to campaign, and the cost of campaigns, I mean, is 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 getting higher and higher. So someone is actually responsible for funding that campaign. Once the politician comes into power, I will certainly need to recoup my investment. So in that case, I'm a, I am more or less an entrepreneur. Um, investing in politicians in, 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 with the expectation that once my party comes into power, I will, I will have various ways of recouping that investment. I mean, that is why in most cases, uh, the manner in which procurement processes are done in this country, we tend to privilege issues of sole sourcing and so on and so forth, because someone has to, um, some, somehow, the resources for funding the, uh, the political machinery would need, would, need, would, 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 would need to be found. And this is one key kind of point that, 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 that repeatedly came up. And we have a situation, I mean, that kind of a situation where the winner takes all. The, 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 if you lose an election, it's like you've lost literally everything. And, yeah. and if you win an election, it means more or less that you've won literally everything because you have access to all forms of, 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 of state resources. So that's zero sum character of our politics. The fact that uh, the um, campaign cost is actually rising, there is no state funding of political parties, and somehow the politician certainly needs to, 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 to find ways of, 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 um, of funding the political campaigns. And many of our, actual, our development problems, actually, you cannot separate from the manner in which democracy has actually taken form in Ghana. We've been talking of illegal money, illegal money, illegal money. I mean, we know, we know one of the major causes or one of the major reasons why our political parties have actually struggled to, 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 to care problems like illegal money is the fact that all of these illegalities actually contribute in, in some ways to, 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 to sustaining politicians in power, to, 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 to uh, helping and kind of financing political parties in a way that enable them to win and maintain uh, political power. So the issue of democracy, just as in your survey, came up, but not in that particular form, because the reality is that it's not, it's not simply the issue of democracy versus non-democracy, but it's the form in which kind of democracy has, has, has taken shape in Ghana. I mean, uh, scholars have kind of described our political context as one of competitive clientelism. Our political parties are competing in using clientelist means of, of, of winning and maintaining political power. So it's the, it's the very form that yeah. democracy has taken in the Ghanaian context. So again, staying with the form, essentially from what you're, you're telling us, so that these political entrepreneurs invest so that when the politicians assume power, they want to have their share. By having their share, in a, in offering in corrupt means, they're depriving the resources that would be available for the general population to improve income levels. Is that, that, is, that, is one, that is one key. That is one key point. The other angle of it is that, I mean, just, just take a look at how we pursue corrupt politicians in, in, in this country. Um, I remember Prof. Jumabedi once used the terminology 
post incumbency accountability. I mean, because, because of the importance of party financiers for the survival of political parties, you, it, it's very rare, it's extremely rare for uh, uh, any of our two dominant political parties to have the courage to be able to prosecute politicians um, um, from their own political parties. And that's the main reason why we often see, uh, see that kind of um, phenomenon where politicians are only or polit are corrupt, corrupt actors are only actually pursued only when after their party leaves in power. So I mean, all of these actually have to do with um, the, 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 the fact that um, those who finance these political parties are extremely important for the survival of the political elite. And therefore, in addition to denying the state the needed resources uh, to develop, once someone who is deemed to be an important financier or an important personality within the political party, parties rarely have the courage and the commitment to prosecute them in a way that would serve as a deterrent. To, 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 to add up. So all of these actually play uh, out in, 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 in making it very difficult in, 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 in curbing uh, grand corruption or if you like political corruption in the Ghanaian context. Okay, which then contributes to poverty. The second uh, item on the list or the second factor they, they, they brought up has to do with sickness. Uh, how are they linking that to poverty? So, 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 so it's, it's essentially about fiscal disability. I mean, the whole idea is that once you are physically disabled, the probability that you would be poor is extremely high because right. one, we know that, I mean, the, a sick person cannot be economically productive. And what that essentially means is, is, is that you are much more liable to poverty. And that is why poverty is much higher among vulnerable populations like the physically disabled, like the sick. In, 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 in the Ghanaian context. So it was actually kind of linked to issues of one's inability to be productive. In the first place, government has to provide the opportunities, but you need to be healthy enough to be able to take advantage of whatever opportunities that uh, the state is able to, to, to provide. So sickness and fiscal disability came up as one main factor that respondents also highlighted as an important cause of of poverty. Okay, but it's also interesting that it came in second after uh, corruption in society. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely so. And, and, and for us, it was also I mean, somehow um, surprising. But exploring, exploring further through the qualitative, the qualitative interviews, the key explanation had been that once you are physically disabled, once you are sick, what it means essentially is that you are necessarily reliant on other actors to survive. What it means essentially is that in, in, in this case, and so long as you are not actually economically productive yourself, the probability that you will be poor is high because it depends to, to the extent to which you will be able to rely, for example, on maybe family members and other forms of of, of various of various forms of, of, of state support. And um, some of these questions were also actually asked in a certain context, because we're also interested in, in, in finding out uh, the extent to which or the, 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 the populations within the Ghanaian context who were likely to be poor and why certain vulnerable, uh, or why certain I mean, segments of the population actually tend to be poorer than, than others. So this was one other key reason why uh, respondents actually uh, highlighted um, issues of sickness and physical disability as a major cause of poverty in, in, in our context. Um, three, so uh, item three and four, uh, as or the factors three and four are those that you can say that, well, governments would have, or the state would have to do something about it. But then when you come to item five, it talks about... Um, Having too, having, many having, having too many children, and that's also quite interesting. But that, that clearly, it's something that we can do something about. I think if you happen to have too many children, then you're likely to end up being poor. So if you'd want to control the number of children you have, it can improve your situation. Well, yes. Yeah. So, 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 so for respondents, I mean, one of the reasons why poverty also persists in our communities is, is because... Um, the poor are those who tend to have a lot more children than, than those who are relatively uh, kind of wealthy. 
So in that in that in that context, in that context, what it meant essentially was that the poor also have some responsibility in terms of helping uh, themselves out of their of their situation. I mean, issues around birth control, for example, as a potential measure. Because if you are poor and you have a lot more dependence, what it means is that you need more resources to feed the several hands, uh, the, the, the several people at, at, at hand. And that can actually exacerbate your poverty situation because you will need a lot more to be able to feed to, uh, to be able to feed your family. And, and, and that in turn makes it very difficult for you to get out of poverty yourself. Uh, item is elite lack of sensitivity. <laughs> Please explain that to us. Whole idea, I mean, it's, it's linked to the issue of limited political commitment. Uh, meaning, I mean, and, and again, just reflecting over the survey, uh, the, 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 the quick survey you just conducted earlier yeah. this morning, uh, when people are putting their hands on issues of greed, um, the idea of people actually being um, uh, fixated about enhancing their own social and economic status. I mean, many Ghanaians don't think that people go into politics with the primary motive of, 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 of helping the poor out of their situation. But it, I mean, as a way of investment, as a way of, uh, as a way of business, in other words, you get into it with the objective that you would be able to make life better for yourself and, and for your family. Of course, there could be, and there are a couple of, um, a couple of exceptions, but the general, the general perception is that elites don't go into, into, into politics with the objective of making life better for the, the underprivileged in society. But the primary motive is to get wealthier and wealthier. I mean, and you can look at our data, you can look at the statistics being churned out by the Ghana Statistical Service in terms of the, 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 the problem of widening inequality in, 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 in Ghana. So whereas, whereas um, I mean, the data shows that poverty is, 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 is reducing, issues of inequality are actually rising. Inequality is rising in Ghana, meaning that the poor is getting poorer and the richer is getting richer. So uh, this idea of lack of sensitivity, I mean, a little lack of or limited elite sensitivity, uh, sensitivity towards the poor was pointing to the very factor that came up in, 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 your, in your quick survey this morning, the issue of greed. Then uh, we also have limited opportunities uh, and uh, laziness. <laughs> and lack of yeah so, yeah yeah so limited opportunities for for jobs i mean the, so the idea so again is one of the external factors that people would put on 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 on, on those who have the mandate to govern um, the fact that the fact that there are very limited productive kind of opportunities we know our unemployment our unemployment situation there are a whole lot of a whole lot of people out there who are keen in 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 in, in working but the opportunities for productive or gainful employment uh, are just so limited. So that, that was a point to which that was, was, was speaking to. And the next factor, I mean, just kind of um, getting back to some of the earlier debates in the early two, uh, in the mid 2000s, the mid to late 2000s when the leap was launched and concerns were raised about, about issues of, I mean, of laziness that, if, 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 government, if governments uh, launch programs like cash transfer programs, that would, that would, that would be um, dishing out monies directly to, to poor people. It will contribute to deepening poverty. Of course, the various um, evaluations of the LEAP have actually demonstrated that this is actually not really a serious concern. On the contrary, these programs are actually contributing to, 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 um, to reducing poverty. And if you actually look at the amount of money that beneficiaries get, I mean, you wonder how that can actually encourage laziness among the poor. Um, lead beneficiary, I mean, a, a lead beneficiary is, a, is entitled to around 64 Ghana cities every month. I mean, that, is, that, that translates to about one Ghana city about one Ghana city a day. Yeah. I mean, how will one Ghana city a day make you lazy? I mean, how, how on earth would somebody, by virtue of gaining access to one Ghana city, become lazy and refuse to work? I don't see how that will happen. I mean, and, and this is also an amount that is, the amount is never adjusted. And pay me, tr uh, trust me, this one Ghana city a day is what governments have been given since 2015. Between 2015 and, and today, it's, 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 it's several years. 
between that time and now, the daily minimum wage has increased by about 41%. The LIB grant has remained actually stagnant. How will such an amount, how will one Ghana city a day in 2015, one Ghana city a day in 2021, really make someone, someone lazy? Of course, there are, still, there are still people who think that there are some people in Ghana who are poor because they are just not working hard enough. But of course, in many cases, the opportunities have to be there before one can actually take advantage of them. And the reality is that the opportunities for productive gainful employment, we all know, are very, very limited. Professor Abdullahi, let's also look at the perceptions of poverty and vulnerability and what you also found out. So the most common factors that render people vulnerable, as we have it on your screen right now, says just bad luck, including destiny and curse. So you ask the people, is that very important or not important? 22% felt that it was very important and uh, not so important, 35.3%. So, yes, essentially meaning that just bad luck, including destiny and curse, doesn't really play such a key role. Inimical cultural practices, 29% uh, felt that it was uh, very important, which is also quite interesting, isn't it? No, no, absolutely. So, again, we asked this question in a certain context, and we also wanted to see uh, the extent to which... Um, one's vulnerability can be attributed to the vulnerable himself. In other words, to what extent am I responsible for my own vulnerable kind of situation? To what extent do I have control um, of myself? So if you look at the if you look at the the, 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 the factors, I mean from 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 bottom, the one key factor that kind of topped in the list was the issue of severe disability once you are severely disabled the probability that you will you will be vulnerable is extremely is extremely high and you see only 2.4 percent of respondents indicating that um that it is not important yeah meaning that the more the the, 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 the extra, severe disability is considered as the number one factor that renders um uh, people liable to issues of vulnerability, and that actually and so, beats so, so that actually beats where, unemployment. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I'm unemployment follows. I'm unemployment follows next. And the third, the last factor you were looking at. So again, it just gives us a certain sense of how people think. Namely, I mean, so so if you look at the last, I mean, the the, the point about bad luck or issues of destiny or case, and and again, the literature refers to some of these as important causes of issues of, of poverty and vulnerability. And you can see that only a kind of a minor segment of the population, in other words, only a few number of respondents felt that this is really a very serious or a very important uh, cause of, or, 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 or a factor that actually renders people vulnerable in the Ghanaian context. So when you are unemployed, you are likely to be very vulnerable. When you are severely disabled, you are likely to be very vulnerable. Um, when, when, when natural disasters uh, actually occur, the extent to which that can render you, vul uh, render you vulnerable is high. So we, we, we projected or kind of prepared the graph according to I mean, how important the various factors were, 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 were identified. And issues of bad weather conditions and so on and so forth all came up, but um, trailing much I mean, far, farther behind problems like unemployment and issues of severe disability. All right, so there's a lot to chew on, uh, Professor Abdullahi, but how would you expect the, the state or, you know, how do you, do you expect that we use this information and the data that you've gathered to inform uh, policy making? Well, so this project, this project is actually part of a larger program that has been implemented. So this study was like a kind of, a baseline study, All right. a baseline study to understand where we are, uh, where are we now? And then the next step would be to actually think through what can be done around many of these problems that are being identified. So that there's a larger program that is actually um, aimed, at, aimed at sensitizing the general public, aimed at kind of um, working closely with, 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 with key policy 
makers to be able to I mean, help identify. So this is this is just this was just a kind of a beginning of a larger program that is aimed at I mean, kind of seeking to understand the knowledge and perceptions of Ghanaians about I mean, around issues of poverty, issues of social protection, and the role of social protection, for example, in addressing problems like poverty and vulnerability. But there is a larger campaign that um, uh, 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 that UNICEF is actually uh, leading. To, 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 to make sure that these these, 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 these issues are carried are carried through further with a lot I mean, a whole lot of other partners uh, involved from media from civil society organizations from academia and so on so I guess one of the programs is actually uh, one of the projects is actually going to focus on issues of sensitization around many of these and working very closely with the key policymakers who are responsible for addressing these kind of challenges. All right, so we let's get to let's get back to Facebook and uh, on scientific survey and get to see some of the comments that people have been sharing. Of course, we've already gone through them and uh, they largely agree with the your research or the study that you did that re indeed corruption is one of the main factors that uh, contributes to poverty in this country. Let's see some of the others. Of course, they also talk about greed and uh, a, a whole lot more on on as, as as factors having to contribute to we'll, we'll get you the comments a little later but i want to thank you very much uh, professor abdullahi for joining us to take us through the findings that you had and uh, we appreciate your time with us this morning here on the am show thank you thanks very much thanks very much all right. And now, closely related to poverty is health. In fact, they are related. We'll be talking about that when we come back from this break. All right. So we're going back to our Facebook post, which was asking what are the causes of poverty in Ghana. And we've already identified corruption as one of them. A lot of you have also talked about greed. But let's get to see the other comments that you have shared with us. So... Immaculate says, high birth rate by the poor, which indeed was one of the things that was captured in the survey. Mismanagement of the economy, embezzlement of state funds and greed, which has come up many times already. Poor leadership. Okay, so they say media, religion and politics. Okay, I don't know how the media comes in there. And uh, let's check out the other comments. Wallace says, Ghana government, both MPP and NDC with their bad leadership. And Abdul Rao says, greed. That crew says the number one cause is our president refuses to create jobs for the youth, but rather creating jobs for their families. So you're meaning unemployment, and you're talking about greed at the same time. Sebik says, leadership. Adolfo, Adolfo says, our leaders are the cause. And Atta Addison says, corruption and religion. And the religion bit is <laughs> interesting. Thomas Kese says, honesty. And Faisal Clinton says bad leadership. All right, so we're also going to give you an opportunity for those of you who are, who are watching who want to call in. You call in and uh, let us know what you think is the main cause of poverty in Ghana. Uh, let's see if the comments that you have or the position that you're taking is, is any different from what we've already picked up from Facebook and from what we have on the survey conducted by UNICEF. So the numbers to call, 030-221-1691 or 2. The numbers are on your screen. So give us a call and let's hear you out. But closely related to the poverty conversation is health. And that conversation will be getting on with that right after we take your calls. So yes, you let us know where you're calling from. And uh, let's hear you out on this issue for many people. They feel it's greed. The others uh, who have, are citing several other things. We have Che Bafo calling from Jasso, our very first caller. Good morning to you, Che Bafo. Yeah, Israel, I want to uh, add up to what Prof said. All right. Uh, I want to add up that uh, the leave payment, the 60 cities, is not for a person, it's for a whole household. All right. It's leave true. Leave payments are made for a household. Not for a second person. So imagine that a household that, is, that has about five, six people, they depend on that 60 cities. Thank you very much. So it can't make, essentially, you're saying that it can't make them lazy. 
that's not possible. That's not possible at all. Yeah. That's all not right. possible at all. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Che Bafo. Who else do we have uh, on the line? We have uh, Albert calling from Jolu. Hello, Albert. Hello. Israel. All right, so what's your position on it? What do you think are the main causes of poverty? Uh, number one is religion. There is religion. There's a in the Bible. That is, uh, passes normally preaches here, go and multiply. Go and multiply in that context. They try to tell the, the congregation that go and give birth to many, as many as that comes, without telling them that go and work hard and take care of the ones that you can, you can actually take care of. Okay. So the poor in the congregation continue to give birth as many as they can, as many as comes. So you realize that the poor rather in the congregation are giving more birth and the problems keep compounding, compounding, compounding so that you see them, they sit at the back, they rather beg the people who have something small in the church. So religion is the number one cause. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Al Albert. We have uh, Kwesi also calling us. He's calling from uh, Kologo. Hello, Kwesi. Join me, please. Yes, Kwesi. Yeah. All right. So uh, what do you, what do you make of... We have been talking of, of uh, about poverty, uh, poverty in Ghana. Yes. And I Yes, and I want to uh, add to that. Mm, the people, uh, the corruption is too much corruption. And then they look down upon uh, we, the people. <clears throat> and I want to add to the, uh, what uh, the professor was saying, please. Yeah. Yeah. Please, the, the professor was saying that, that, uh, the corruption and then the destiny and then uh, what do we call it? Bad luck. Uh -huh. So yeah, hello, we're listening to you. All right, we seem to have we have lost you. We have Seidu calling from Kwame Dance. Hello, Seidu. Yes, please. Good morning. All right, good morning. And what's your take on it? Please look at what is happening in Ghana, right, please. We have greedy people enough in this country, especially those selling the items. Maybe the item doesn't cost high, but immediately they go bring it. They raise the, okay. the prices. Okay. So greedy and the politics. They are the cause of the poverty in this country. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sedu, uh, calling us from Kwame Danso. Let's see who else we have on the line. Uh, to speak to this issue, you can call us to 030-221-1691 or 2. We have Abubakar uh, calling us from the Northern Nigeria. Hello, Abubakar. Hello. Yes. Uh, my problem is, yeah, it is about the, the, this and the political interest. That calls, uh, hello. Yes, we can hear you, Abubakar. Yeah, it is about the political interest that cause all that. How 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 is the political interest related to the poverty of yeah, the poverty? The reason is when it due to the political. Uh, we the poor we involve ourselves too much. When we involve ourselves, they use. No, when it's with the politics. Okay, it looks they like you're listening to us to... on TV. I want you to turn off your TV so you can hear us, so that when you speak, you don't get confused. We will not support us. Okay. All right, we couldn't quite uh, get you. We have uh, Jima calling from Suyani. Hello, Jima. Yeah, Israel, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning to your viewers as well. Good morning. Yeah, I said, I said hello. Yes, we can hear you. But yeah, when, you, when you call, please turn off the TV or mute the TV so that you don't get confused when you're talking and there's feedback. Yeah, my TV is off. All right. Yeah, I say in the view that poverty... Uh, poverty... Stop. I say in that view because uh, uh, corruption is actually the cause of poverty in our country. Yeah. Likely because if you look at it, we have so many people who have completed schools after suffering to go through the educational system, they are qualified. 
currently is difficult for them to even secure well-paid jobs. Yes, and so these people live several years without getting jobs. And those have families to attend to. And all of us as a country, we are pretending. Seriously, Israel, some of the things that are happening nowadays, they are serious. People have to pay huge sums of money after they have completed school to get jobs. Why in the first place that we to get money to pay for it if they were having it? Why would they even be looking for yeah. works again at the government sector? Yes. But these are the things we are confronted with. So it keeps on piling political incidents in the country. And we don't really know what, it, what we will do with it. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Jima. Uh, you make a, a, a good point. We have Nuru uh, from Tamale. Nuru is going to be our, our last caller. Hello, Nuru. Hello, Nuru. Okay, we lost the uh, Nuru. But yes, so closely related to poverty and, uh, is, is health. If you're not healthy, you're likely to find yourself being uh, in, in a situation where you're not so financially stable and that worsens your, your situation when it comes to uh, poverty. It's a conversation we're going to be having and we'll do that right after this quick break to stay tuned.